Now let us discuss Ohm's law. Okay, Ohm's law. Now, a German physicist in uh, in eighteen hundred and twenty-six, a German physicist uh, named as George Simon Ohm, German physicist George Simon Ohm, he made a relationship between the current and potential difference. So now. Now, what relation he made is the relation between the potential difference in such a way that the current is directly proportional to the potential difference, or the potential difference is directly proportional to the current, the flow of current. And he postulated a law also, and the law we call it as Ohm's law, in which he states that the current flowing through a conductor, the Ohm's law states that. The current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference in which the physical condition like the temperature pressure remains constant. Okay, so from according to Ohm's law, okay, current is directly proportional to potential difference, or potential difference is directly proportional to the current in which the temperature pressure remains constant. So this is Ohm's law. Now from here. What I can do is that I can write V equals V is proportional to I, or V equals to R I. R I means this sign of proportionality. This sign of proportionality is written as R, and this R is constant, known as resistance. Okay, so I can write V equals to R I, or V equals to I R I can write here. Why I'm writing is that I'm writing alphabetical order because first comes I. Then comes R, so V equals to I R, so this is Ohm's law. Okay. Now from this V equals to I, this is the first equation. Okay. To find potential difference, if the current and resistance is given, you can use this formula. This is another formula. And also we know that I R equals to V or I equals to V upon R. This is the second one. Or what I can write R equals to V upon I. This is equation three. That means the three formulas are there. Look at here. I is proportional to V, or V is proportional to I, or I can write here instead of I is proportional to V is proportional to I. Any one I can write it here. Or V equals to R I, or V equals to I R. Or I R equals to V, I equals to V divided by R, R equals to V divided by I. That means current and Uh, current is directly proportional to potential difference, or potential difference directly proportional to current. But current is inversely proportional to resistance. Okay, or resistance is inversely proportional to current. If there is more resistance, there will be less current. If there is more resistance, less current. So suppose if you consider this equation, if the current is more, resistance will be less. If the current is less, resistance will be more. Similarly, if the resistance is less, current will be more. If the resistance is more, current will be less. Since they are inversely proportional. Okay. Now this sign is known as the. Now this R is known as the resistance. Okay. Now the next one. Now, since we know that current is directly proportional to the uh, resistance. Uh, sorry, uh, potential difference. Current is directly proportional to the potential difference. So, what happens if the potential difference is directly proportional to the current, or the current is directly proportional to the potential difference? So, there are the, some conditions are there. Okay, if the potential difference, since the potential difference and current are are equal, they are directly proportional. If the potential difference between the two ends of the conductor. Okay, this is if the potential difference between the two ends of the conductor is doubled. Okay, if the potential difference is doubled. Okay, two times doubled means two times here. Okay, that current will also be two times. If the potential difference is half, if the potential difference is half, current will also be half. If the potential difference is nine times, current will also be nine times. And so on. Since they are directly proportional, is it clear? Then other one. So if the 
now the next point is here that um, the strength of the current the strength of the current flowing through a conductor okay depends upon the two factors the strength of the, the next factor is there the strength of the current flowing through a conductor depends upon the two factors number one factor is the potential difference between the across the end of the conductor okay potential difference across the end of the number one factor in which the strength of an electric current depends are uh, number one is the potential difference across the end of the conductor and other one is the resistance of the conductor okay so the the electric current flowing through the strength of the the strength of the current flowing through the conductor depends upon the two factors remember that number one is potential difference across the end of the conductor and other one is the resistance of the conductor so that is v equals to i R or I R equals to V or I equals to V upon R. So that means the current flowing, the strength of the current flowing through conductor depends upon the potential difference across the end of the conductor and the resistance of the conductor. Okay. So if the potential difference is more, current will also be more. If the potential difference is less, current will also be less. Similarly, if the resistance is more, current will be less. If the resistance between the conductor is less, current will be more. So, therefore, the strength of the conductor, uh, the strength of the current flowing through a conductor depends upon the two factors. Okay. Now, let us come to the next point: resistance. Now, so to find resistance here, suppose if I draw a conductor, uh, a metallic wire. Okay, join with the external circuit here. Okay, this is positive, this is negative. And the current flows from negative to positive. This is negative, this is positive charge conductor. Okay, and this is electrons. Okay. Now what you find is that now let us consider a metallic conductor. Now let us come to the word resistance. Okay, resistance. R E S I S T A N C. Resistance means oppose or obstruction. Okay, so obstruction in the flow of current. Suppose if I now how the resistance will occur. Now if I take a metallic conductor, join with the external circuit. Okay, this is the battery. This is the connecting wire. Okay. Now the electron flows from negative to positive. Now when the Now, when it is connected, when the conductor is connected by a wire, okay, and uh, with a source of current, the flow of electron takes place, and the flow of electron takes place from negative to positive, and the electron and the current flows from positive to negative. This is the relation of the flow of current. Now, when the electron flows from the negative to positive terminal, what will happen is that now these electrons. When they are moving or flowing in a different direction, they collide with the neighboring uh, the neighboring electrons. They collide with the electrons as well as with the with the positive ions which are present in the conductor. And therefore, when they can collide, okay, the the speed of the electron will be reduced. When the speed of the electron will be reduced, that will reduce the flow of current because the flow of current will take place. When there is a flow of electrons, and if, if the electron cannot flow continuously or smoothly, if the if the electron cannot flow, and they will finally there will be the obstruction in the in the flow of current. So when there is obstruction in the flow of current, then resistance will be will be exist here. Okay, so resistance occurs when the when the electron flowing from the one end of the conductor towards the other end, while they are flowing, they collide with the with the With the electrons, with the neighboring electrons, as well as with the positive charged ions, and that finally reduces the speed of the electrons moving in the conductor, and that occurs resistance. Okay, so therefore we can say that resistance means it is a property of a conductor by virtue which oppose the flow of electric current in a conductor. So that means it is a property by it is a the property of a conductor okay now this resistance is offered only in the conductor so we can say that is the property of the conductor by virtue which it oppose the which it uh, it opposes the flow of electric current in a conductor so the that is known as the resistance and resistance is written as capital letter i okay so i resistance equals to v upon how you calculate 
resistance equals to V upon I. And the SI unit of resistance is Ohm. Okay, SI unit of resistance is Ohm, or symbolically it is written as Ohm, like this. Symbol, in symbol you can, read, you can write this way, okay, which is Ohm. And Ohm equals to the SI unit of potential, uh, potential difference is volt. Okay, the SI unit of current is ampere. So if I write it here, 1 ohm, 1 volt and 1 ampere, you can define ohm also. So 1 ohm is the resistance of a conductor. 1 ohm is the resistance. 1 ohm is the resistance of, of a conductor when the potential difference, such that when the potential difference of 1 volt is applied to its end, the current will be 1 ampere. Okay, so that is the resistance. So therefore, 1 ohm is the resistance in which if 1 uh, one uh, volt of potential difference is applied at the end, the current flowing through is 1 ampere. So this is the definition of ohm. Understood? So therefore, now the next point is here. The factors affecting the uh, resistance of the conductor. So what are the factors affecting the resistance of the conductor? Is there are the four factors which affect the resistance of the conductor. Number one factor is uh, length of a conductor. Number one factor is length of a conductor. Okay. More the length of the conductor, that means the resistance of conductor is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. Number one factor. Length of the conductor means resistance is directly proportional to the length. More the length of the conductor, more will be the resistance. Shorter the length of the, of the conductor or the wire, lesser will be the resistance. So therefore, we can consider that longer wire has got more resistance than the shorter wires. Okay? Longer wire has got more resistance. If I take a very long wire, okay, and a short wire, okay, if I mark it in AB, now this longer wire has got more resistance. Resistance is maximum here. Because the electron has to travel a long distance. And if the electron has to travel a long distance while traveling, they collide with the, the other electrons present in the conductor as well as with the positive charge ion and therefore that will finally bring some uh, obstruction to the flow of current therefore by reducing the uh, reducing the flow of electrons. So longer the wire, more will be the resistance. Shorter the wire, lesser will be the resistance. So that is the first condition that the resistance of a wire, the resistance of conductor is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. Second one. The resistance of the wire of the conductor is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of a conductor. Cross-sectional area means, suppose this is the conductor, this is the cross-sectional area, this part. Okay, this is the cross-sectional area. Okay, so if I draw a very thin wire, okay, the cross-sectional area is less. Okay, thicker wire. Now, inversely proportional to the resistance, inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. More the area, more the cross-sectional area of the conductor, lesser will be the resistance. Lesser the cross-sectional area of the conductor, more, uh, more will be the resistance. Okay, since they are inversely proportional. So therefore, if I consider a wire, a thicker wire and a thinner wire. A thicker wire means cross-sectional area is more. Okay, thicker wire is having cross-sectional area more. So if the cross-sectional area is more, resistance will be less. So thicker wire has got a less resistance, thinner wire, since they have got a uh, less cross-sectional area, more resistance will be offered. Thinner wire has got a less resistance. So depending upon the cross-sectional area, the resistance is inversely proportional to the area of the conductor, area of the conductor, cross-sectional area of the conductor, which means that thicker wire has got lesser cross-sectional area, uh, thicker wire has lesser resistance and thinner wire has got more resistance. This, this is the second condition. And third one is there, that is temperature of the conductor. Okay, temperature of the conductor. Resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to the temperature of the wire. Okay, so that means uh, the resistance of the pure matter, they increase with the, they are the uh, temperature of the pure matter increases with the increase of the resistance and decrease with the decrease of resistance. If the temperature increases, uh, resistance will also increase. If the temperature decreases, the resistance will also decrease. Okay. And next point is there that is the effect of nature of the material. The, the, uh, the fourth one is nature of the material. Nature. Nature of the material. So the nature of the material means what kind of material you have taken. 
what type of uh, conducting wire you have taken okay you have taken uh, you can take a copper silver aluminium okay so any kinds of uh, uh, wire you can take any kinds of metal you can take okay and some metal have got very high resistance some metal has got low resistance okay and the metals like the aluminium silver copper has got low resistance so if there is low resistance the flow of current will be more so that is why in an electric circuit we use copper wire rather than the other metals because the copper wire has got more uh, uh, less resistance and therefore the more current will flow so the last one is the nature of the material of the conductor so these are the factors which affects the resistance of the is it clear? Now let us come to the next point, the uh, conductance. Okay, after the resistance, we will come to the next point known as the conductance. Now this conductance is the reciprocal of uh, resistance and it is denoted as capital G. It is the reciprocal of resistance. So if I reciprocal resistance, one upon R, it becomes conductance. So conductance is written as Z, capital Z, and the uh, uh, it, it can be written as 1 over R. Okay, so conductance is the reciprocal of resistance. Okay, and it is uh, denoted by symbol S. Okay, conductance is denoted by symbol S. So this is about the conductance. And the SI unit, the next point is there, the SI unit of conductance. The SI unit of conductance is written as MO. Okay, so O x m ohm ohm is the si unit of uh, resistance but the si unit of conductance that is z can be written as m x o which is spelled from backward ohm is spelled from backward so that means m x o so mo is the si unit of conductance so remember this z is the, the conductance which is written as 1 upon r symbolically written as s and the si unit of of conductance is written as mo, which is spelled as backward from the O. Okay. Okay. Now the next point. Let us come to the uh, ohmic and non-ohmic resistors. Okay. Ohmic and non-ohmic resistors. Okay. Now the conductor which obeys Ohm's law. Okay. The conductor which obeys Ohm's law are said to be as a ohmic resistor. The conductor which obeys Ohm's law are said to be as a ohmic resistor. Okay. Now, example of ohmic resistor are considered as uh, all the, the metals that silver, copper, all are ohmic resistors. Okay. So, in ohmic resistors, silver are there, copper are there, aluminium are there. A L I L E M L I U M. Aluminium are there. Okay. So all these are the the ohmic conductor because they uh, they obey Ohm's law. So when you draw the graph, okay, the graph when you draw, this is the origin, this is x-axis and y-axis. So in ohmic resistor, the graph is a straight line from the origin. Okay, the graph is straight line. So that means now this ohmic a register they obey Ohm's law. So what the obey Ohm's law means? V equals to IR. That means put, uh, current is directly proportional to the potential difference or potential difference is directly proportional to the current. So if the conductor will obey Ohm's law, they are known as the ohmic resistor. So when you draw the graph, the graph will be a straight line starting from the origin. Okay. Now how it states is that if I write here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, and here is the current. Y axis will represent as a current, and X is represent as potential difference. Now, how they follow is that if the current is 1 ampere, potential difference will be 1 volt. If the current will be 2 ampere, potential difference will be 2 volt. If the current will be 3 ampere, potential, will be, uh, potential difference will be 3 volt, and so on. So that means they are equal, they are directly proportional. If the current is 1 ampere, the potential difference will also be 1 okay so these are known as the uh, ohmic resistors okay the next point is here not only resistor non ohmic resistor are there the conductor which do not obey ohm's law they are known as the non ohmic resistor example are there the vacuum tube okay electrolyte semiconductor diode 
all these other non ohmic conductors. They do not obey Ohm's law. So in that case, what will happen? The graph, okay, the graph when I draw here, x, o, y, the graph will be a curve. Instead of uh, you know, instead of straight line, the, the graph will follow a curve right here. It form, follows a curve, which means that the conductor is not obeying Ohm's law. That means the current is not proportional to potential difference, neither the potential difference is proportional to the current. So the example of non ohmic conductor are, are electrolyte are there, uh, then other one is the vacuum tube are there, semiconductor diode, all these are the example of non, uh, non ohmic conductors. Thank you.